Hey everyone, welcome back to the Halo Wars 2 Beginner's Guide series. This is a series of videos that I make to help you be better at Halo Wars 2. Um, there is a playlist with some of the leaders and factions that I've covered in the past, uh, so you can check that out to see all the videos in the series, but there also is a really nice organized page on our Discord server for all of the guides in this series uh, to help you find these videos easier. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to super turtle. I really feel like I'm qualified professionally <laughs> to uh, talk about super turtling. I'm kidding, by the way. Um, so to super turtle, you need to kind of come into the match with a particular mindset. And in my opinion, the super turtle mindset is, is you never go on the opponent's side of the map for the entire match as punishment. The point of super turtling is to make it as fun for you and as painful uh, as possible for your opponent all at the same time. And you can do this pretty easily on a handful of maps. So it's important to determine what sort of map that you want to super turtle on. I know the maps in Halo Wars are randomized when you're doing matchmaking. Um, but the best maps to Super Turtle in Halo Wars 2, Sentry by far, I think is designed for Super Turtling. I mean, truly it is. It's relatively very easy to Super Turtle. In fact, we actually have a Super Turtle playlist on the channel, which I'll put a card on the video if I remember. Um, and it, it has like, uh, I don't know, 20 games or so of Super Turtle matches. And some of them are even over four hours long. Uh, however... Almost all the good matches take place on Sentry because that map is so good for turtling. Badlands is also pretty good for turtling as well. I put that in second place. Uh, Fishers actually is pretty good for turtling. When you get to get in some of the larger maps, like say uh, Vault is really difficult to turtle on. Uh, it is possible. Uh, same with um, Highway is a little difficult. Um, and then Fort Jordan, of course, is great for turtling, but that's not in matchmaking. So for the sake of this video, we're going to be doing Sentry. Let me add a uh, AI here. So I, I turned off Fog of War for the sake of this video, just to help explain things a little bit better. Uh, but starting out for um, Sentry in particular, these power crates are pretty critical. So it's, you're actually going to get there faster if you make a Jackrabbit and send a jackrabbit over there, rather than telling your marines to go all the way over there from the beginning. I would get these uh, supply crates, as well as those power crates right off the bat. We're gonna build some supply pads to start off. And then for Professor Anders, we're gonna get the R&D upgrade. We're also gonna upgrade that to go for the second point. All right, so our jackrabbit's up. We're gonna send him all the way out there. We'll upgrade this supply pad here. And what's really great is this map is symmetrical. So I'm never going to go past like this mini base here. Uh, I would not recommend getting this mini base because you're going to put a little bit of too much time and resources in defending it. However, I would say that getting this power node over here is in your best interest because uh, this will give you some line of sight if your opponent is gonna go across this bridge. Looks like that's kind of what he wants to do. He's just kind of standing there. So third, I probably, I'd either go generator uh, or supply pad. You, you, really, you gotta keep in mind that you wanna go uh, tech two as quickly as possible. However, you don't wanna be completely defenseless if your uh, opponent starts to rush you. We also want to grab this mini over here. This is going to be pretty important. Let's upgrade that. i probably put your armory or something over here. Um, maybe in the beginning, we'll put a supply pad. We can always blow it up and uh, put an armory there later. I'll go uh, generator here. You could potentially grab this back mini here. I, in my mind, once you lose it, just kind of leave it be unless there's really nothing going on in the match. But this could be a good way to get some supplies uh, early on in the match. 
So now we're upgrading to second tech here. I'm also getting a power node. Now, this map uh, in particular works great in twos. And you should really keep in mind what your ally has for their leader and their leader power. So, for example, if someone, if your ally is playing as Atriox, let them take this node so if they get countermeasures, the uh, mines will spawn here. Or if they're playing as, say, Serena, let them take this power node so they can get the frost um, effect on the power node. It, it, every little bit is going to help in this regard, and that's certainly one of them. So now we're at second tech. If you have survived your uh, opponent kind of rushing you, which does happen quite often in Halo Wars, it may actually happen more often on a map such as Sentry because I know people that um, they either auto quit when Sentry shows up or they'll do a really hard rush at the beginning because they don't want a turtle to happen on this map. But if, if you do, we need to start making our defensive units. So we need to get an expo going right away. Once our expo is done, we want to start making uh, maybe some... Oh, he's got frost ravens here. Unusual. <laughs> he just totally blew up my uh, jackrabbit there. Okay. So we need to make sure that we keep our side of the map protected um, and not make sure that we're leaving ourselves vulnerable in a particular area so an example could be that you can put some marines in this tower here so if you don't have this node it looks like my opponent has taken this node here i should be able to get some decent line of sight across this bridge if i had fog of war turned on also this base is going to be your most critical base you're going to want to do everything you can to protect this base this is uh harder to defend actually than this one here there's a lot of things you can do to protect this base. Uh, for example, you have line of sight here. You have line of sight on your mini base here. You don't really have a lot of line of sight, um, probably from this many onward. So a surprise attack could really come to this base. If we're playing on twos, there will be a base slot here. And this one's easier to defend than this one. So what I'm trying to say is, that let's say you're playing as UNSC and your ally is playing as Banished, you probably actually want to flip-flop and have the, your Banished uh, teammate take this base. The reason being is because they can put shield generators and uh, cloaking generators here, and then you can put Kodiaks inside this shield uh, to where they're protected from the shield, but they can still shoot outwards. So a question may be, well, I'm playing as UNSC, so what should I do with this base here? Quite frankly, you're going to want to make sure that it's protected just as well as you could with Banish. So that means getting something such as your Fortify base upgrades here. Uh, it'll be that you want to have turrets here. You want to position your turrets uh, kind of in a smart order. So you don't want to put siege turrets here on the front. I'd actually put like regular turrets here and then say like a siege turret in the back and then even go so bold as to say a watchtower. This is for line of sight improvements for your siege turret. Also get a little bit of like a heads up of where your um, opponent may attack. And don't put all your eggs in one basket. So don't put, I would say no more than one generator here unless you know for certain that you can protect this. I put most of your generators back here on this base. The only thing that would really show up on this base would be a surprise air attack. So you could do, for example, put four turrets here and make them all anti-air. If you have your fortified base upgrades, uh, not only is your base going to have more health, but your turrets will have more health and damage as well. And if you're playing as someone like, say, as Johnson, you'll be able to siphon on your turrets. I'm playing as Anders here, so my turrets have a little bit of a shield. Now let's get on to some more of the units that you want to make. Kodiaks are really important if you're playing as UNSC. If you're playing as Banished, blister backs. Um, but I actually, I, I believe that Kodiaks are better than, um, than their Banished counterparts. I actually have two um, points stacked up here. So we have R&D 1 and 2. 
Uh, we're not really going to be wanting a whole lot of the offensive powers as Anders, so we're not going to get the uh, the Protector Sentinel. I'm not going to get the mine. Oh, I may get the mines. I think actually for this, I want to go... So now that we're at, uh, we have two leader points here to spend as Anders, let's have a look at some of the other powers that we should or should not get. We should not get the Protector Sentinel. It's not that good. Uh, Arc Defense could come in handy. Same with the turret. Um, I'm actually may opt for, let's say, the mines. And then I actually have one more point left available. We have the Sentinel Beacon and Sentinel Synergy. The Sentinel Beacon is where your Kodiak and Siege Turret attacks now summon friendly Aggressor Sentinels. This is such a good power for Anders. You can increase the amount of Sentinels for that for the Synergy. However, for our next point, we're going to skip that and go with the Sentinel Network. This will come in uh, really handy later on as well. Good place to put your mines. You can put them there on this hill. You could put them here on the other side of this bridge. You could put them right here on this opening. So where should we put some Kodiaks? Well, there's a few spots. I really like putting some here. This will allow your Kodiaks to shoot this mini base once you get some line of sight. I actually don't think you can get direct line of sight putting them there. Uh, another good spot is right here on this hill. This will protect your Kodiaks a little bit uh, from units coming up here. But they can definitely shoot down there. This will also help them shoot anyone coming across the bridge. Now, you don't want to completely fill up your pop with Kodiaks. You want to make sure that um, you have other units to defend. You're not going to be able to win with just Siege alone. However, Siege is really important. If you want to add a lot more Siege but not spend the pop, you could actually put Siege turrets on these two front towers of your main. They will have line of sight to shoot down here. I would go no more than two. Uh... Again, this is because you want to prevent an air attack on your main. So definitely make sure you get the anti-air upgrades on your back turrets. Now we've gone over what sort of defensive units we should make, but are there any other units that we should be making here? Well, yeah, actually there are. Uh, firstly, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Combat tech marines are so good. Uh, these, especially if you're playing as someone like a Cutter, you can Super Turtle as Cutter. Uh, Cutter is, has the raid upgrade for his marines, so they'll move very quickly and they can easily take out air with their uh, rockets. So I make sure you have a decent bit of marines on hand. I'd say somewhere between five and maybe seven or eight marines. Um, if your opponent's going to be going heavy air, then increase the amount of marines that you have. Uh, just as the game goes on, the marines kind of become less viable with something like, say, a bunch of tanks. I'm going to steal that vulture. Maybe I won't. Maybe it'll die before I can do so. Some other units to get are wolverines. Make sure you don't get a whole lot of wolverines. They are fairly weak on anything but uh, air. Um, and then probably some heavy tech 3 units, like say scorpions. So mix in wolverines, scorpions, um, you know, your regular combat tech marines. And then Nightingales. You're going to want Nightingales to heal your base. You can use their Y ability to cloak your base or cloak your opponent. Um, and of course, it will heal things as well. By and large, that's really it. The key is to make sure that you don't group your units together to avoid any potential nukes. You want to make sure that you are protecting um, you know, your side of the map. You never want to go on your opponent's side of the map. It doesn't matter, if, say, for Sentry, they took that base at all. Um, actually, the more you sit here, and you can kind of see this starting to happen, the more resources you're going to get. Um, if you watch some of our longer Super Turtle videos, you sitting here is actually going to be more economically viable than trying to attack. Reason being is you have the advantage already. Uh, you can see how many higher tech units are attacking me. I so mostly have marines and warthogs around here. And between my sentinels 
and everything else. This is the, the AI, but he is struggling a little bit here. And this is all going to pay dividends as your units get uh, veterancy and as you get your vehicle upgrades and your base upgrades. It's just going to be harder and harder for your opponent to make a dent and uh, do something like this. Do a slam with the stun and drop some mines. I didn't stun that other tank, but I just stole that dude's tank. So there's a lot that can be done here, and you're actually going to have more money than your opponent because they're going to be spending more money to build more units. Whereas theoretically speaking, your turrets, uh, your siege, everything else should live. If you want to see a more practical example, I'll leave a link to uh, probably my favorite turtle video that Ed and I have ever recorded. Um, it is fairly long, but you can kind of get the point after, say, 15 or 20 minutes or so. Uh, great video. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your feedback on this. There are more videos dedicated to specific leaders in Halo Wars 2. There is a playlist for that, as well as a nice pretty page on our Discord server that's a little bit more organized. And again, there is a playlist for the Super Turtle matches that we've done. Uh, for you to see some better examples. But thank you so much for watching this, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. I'll see you, James.